take two. <laughs> it's uh, Tuesday, November 1st, and I want to welcome you to our uh, Columbus, Wisconsin City Council meeting. And our city clerk, Pat Gable, will now take the roll. All right. Present. Arnold. Present. <clears throat> Gray's excused. Motive. Present. Reed. Here. Wilkie. Present. Steiner. Here. So we have a quorum. If you are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's meeting has been noticed in accordance with state statutes and local ordinances. And I am now looking for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Alder Motif will make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Alder Rolke will second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve tonight's agenda. Is there any discussion? OK, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody, anybody opposed? Um, we do not have anybody signed up to speak tonight unless someone came in late and wished to speak. Okay, in that case. I'll have a question Well, um, the way we do it is <laughs> if you want to let us know something, um, you can come up during this part of the meeting and just express whatever it is that you have a concern about. Uh, either that or you can contact somebody after the meeting if you have a question. Okay. And you right there at the podium. And um, I'm not sure if the mic is turned on. No. Okay. No, that would be too easy. <laughs> well, I'm looking here. <laughs> uh, and can, can you please state your name and address? Uh, Kenneth Schultz, 708 Maple Avenue, Columbus, Wisconsin. Okay. I see that you are talking about recycling and garbage. Uh, mm -hmm. Two things I'd like to see you look into. Some of the neighboring communities here pick it up recycling every other week. And there is one that was picking it up. And I heard they quit and picking it every other, every week now. I don't know why. If you could check into that and see which one is cost efficient for us in Columbus. And another thing is our trash pickup for the months of December, January, and February. Is it possible that we could pick it up every other week? Because there shouldn't be too much odor coming from the heat. During the summertime, I'd definitely say we got to pick it up every week. But them cold months, if we could possibly pick it up every other week and if we could make a get a little cheaper I know it's you're still going to have as much garbage to pick up but you don't have the labor and the maintenance on the truck for the guys picking it up we maybe could get a little discount on that that's what I got to say okay well Something thank you, you to think about thank you for expressing yeah. your opinion yeah. we appreciate it uh, okay anyone else who didn't sign up okay um, Moving right along, I'm looking for a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. I have a few corrections. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, on the regular meeting minutes, under item four, uh, discussion approval of 2023 budget, if we go to the second line, it says for the budge. I believe that should be budget. Under number six, report of city officers um, thank you to those who attend that should be attended ed past tense and then going all the way down to the second from last where we're talking about the Louis body dementia I wasn't sure if those dots were left there um, purpose or if dementia needs to be put in there um, oh I see yeah mm -hmm. And that, that is all I had. And if everyone accepts those corrections, then I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Alder Rocky will second. So it has been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda with the noted um, changes. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, now we're going into uh, tonight's new business. And the first uh, item under new business is to consider and take action on resolution number 2122, a preliminary resolution declaring intent to levy special assessments under the municipal police powers pursuant to section 66.0703 stats for Folsom Street. Um, so you may remember that uh, I think it was uh, City uh, Engineer Jason Letha talked with us about this at our last meeting. Um, Folsom Street has been approved for reconstruction in 2023. Um, does anybody have any questions since Jason is here tonight before we move along? Okay. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty, pretty cut and dried. And so I am looking for a motion to take action on this resolution. Um, Alder Albright can make a motion to consider and take action on resolution 21 and 22 preliminary resolution declaring intent to, to levy special assessments under municipal police powers. Pursuant to section 66.0703 stats, Folsom Street. And just for clarification, when you say take action, you mean to approve it? Correct? To approve it, yes. Okay. Alder Motive will second. So it has been um, moved and seconded that we approve resolution 2122 as stated by Alder Albright. Is there any discussion? Okay. In that case, we will do a roll call on this. Motive? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rokey? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Albright? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to move on now to number two on the agenda, which is to consider and take action on a special charge for the garbage and recycling fee for the 2023 budget. Um, and again, this is something that we did talk about in our last meeting. Um, is there anything you want to add in here, Kyle? Or uh, I think the only thing I would add is that the contract for garbage and recycling collection next year has already been acted on, and we are locked in for next year's collection. This is simply securing the funding by special charge to cover the fees that we've already agreed to pay for next year's collection. So I am looking for a motion um, to consider and take action on this uh, special charge for the garbage and recycling fees for 2023. Alder Rolke will move to approve the special charge for garbage and recycling fees for 2023 budget. Alder Albert will second. second. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so it has been moved and seconded that we approve the special charge for garbage and recycling fees for 2023. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and now we're down to number three, uh, which is to approve uh, or to consider and take action on the claims in the amount of $945,241. Alder Motif will make a motion to approve payment of claims in the amount of $945,241. Alder Albright will second that. So it has been moved and seconded that we approve the claims in the amount specified. Is there any discussion? We'll do a roll call on this, please. Motive? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rolke? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Albright? Aye. Motion carries. Great. So we have approved the claims, again, with a very quick meeting tonight. Uh, moving on to the report of city officers and... Uh, uh, Administrator Ellison will go first. All right, thank you. Uh, a couple items. Uh, the CDBG project has wrapped up, so Fuller Street is now open again. Uh, there were a few hiccups during the project, but all that's left now is the closeout paperwork, so I think that's a positive development. Um, uh, tomorrow is the Eastern Columbia County Joint Municipal Court meeting. Uh, that is where they will have on the agenda uh, whether or not they'll accept Columbus back into their court system. Uh, I'll be attending, and I hope to have good news in uh, two weeks when we meet again. 
this morning, uh, Jeff Felt, uh, he joined the city as interim utility superintendent. Uh, historically, he's been managing utilities for uh, several decades, uh, most recently in Kakana, and has been a contributor to WPPI throughout his career. And he'll be helping the, the staff and utility commission during the recruitment for uh, the permanent superintendent. Uh, and finally, we're really excited to announce that we've uh, hired our next city treasurer, uh, Crystal McCauley. Uh, Crystal has uh, a lot of accounting experience in her background, and she'll be joining us from her current position in Fox Lake, where she is the city treasurer there. Um, everyone involved in the recruitment was really impressed with her, and uh, we've also given her some additional time before she starts so that she can make sure Fox Lake is kind of taken care of and set up with their tax bills and everything like that. So uh, we won't see her until about December 12th, but we are very excited and uh, uh, very happy that she'll be joining us. Uh, so great news for the city of Columbus. Um, we appreciate the city of Fox Lake training her very well. Thank you, Kelly. Um, but, and that's all I have. Okay, great. Well, it was a pretty exciting weekend for Columbus. Uh, the high school football team won their playoff game and they're going on to the next game, which I I should have looked this up before I came tonight, but <laughs> everybody knows, right? <laughs> Except me. So you have a kid on the team, right? And it's so it's going to be Friday at seven. Is that what? I, at seven, yes. And it'll yes. be here, in town. We've, in town. Here. Yes. yes. Okay. And I don't remember, but they're also from way over by um, Ellsworth no. or something. In Ellsworth. Yes. Yeah. So we're we're hoping it stays at seven. Um, and senior Tucker McGee went to state for track, and he finished in the top third. And I heard that the drama club's presentation of Dracula was really good and really scary. So I want to congratulate everybody in town who participated or supported all these activities. Um, just want to remind you at our last meeting, we heard from Jeff uh, Krako about the Veterans Day ceremony that's going to honor Purple Heart recipients at the statue on the boulevard starting at dusk or twilight. I, one of those two, maybe they're the same. <laughs> I, I think he's still uh, ironing out because there's three, uh, three dusks or three twilights. There's the standard one, and then there's nautical, and there's some other. Uh, so we're still working okay. on that, but it's going to be uh, when it gets dark. Okay, <laughs> and uh, that'll be out at you know right on the boulevard by the statue. Everyone is welcome. Um, uh, uh, it was very interesting to talk to Jeff about this, and uh, uh, so far, as far as we know, Columbus may be one of the few communities in the whole state that is um, holding this kind of ceremony. And um, I personally am and per particularly uh, touched by this. I have an uncle who died uh, almost two years ago. He was almost 101, and he fought in World War II and earned a Purple Heart. So this is, uh, this is going to be very special. I um, want to remind people that uh, next Tuesday, week from today, is Election Day. Many important races on the ballot. And ooh, I got, a, I got a note from Pat, and where the heck did I put it? Um, about, maybe you remember, Pat. I just have too many papers here. Um, we've had a number of people who have come in person to vote absentee at City Hall. And I, wait, is this it? Here we go. Um, 556 ballots have been issued. Uh, 411 have been returned, which is great. And so 98 people have come in to vote uh, absentee in person at City Hall. And you can continue to do that through Friday at 4 o'clock right here. If you are returning an absentee ballot in person, you, it has to be your own. You can't return it for someone else. And then uh, the polls are open on Tuesday from 7 to 8 in the evening. So I hope everybody turns out to, to vote next week. Um, Did we I? Have to, we're open until 5 o'clock on Friday. Oh, on Friday to, to accept ba uh, absentee ballots? OK, thank you so much. That's great that you guys are doing that. Um, the uh, library would like to remind me that um, the uh, Friends of the Library has a book sale the second and fourth Saturdays of every month from 10 in the morning until um, 2 in the afternoon. They're all used books, and you can get a whole bag of them for 5 bucks. So it's if you're looking for kids' books or 
I know they have a lot of romances now, uh, but they have a wonderful variety of not fiction, nonfiction, everything that gets donated to them. So stop by, um, and uh, the annex, of course, is the building, you know, right across the parking lot from the library. And they are, the library itself is still <clears throat> holding their two adult book clubs that meet at the uh, senior center on Thursday afternoons, the second Thursday of the month at 1.30, and the third Thursday of the month at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Uh, the rec department wanted me to remind you that the commotion is going to be coming out soon with events um, for, let's see, November, December, January, and all kinds of things that are going on in town. If you're interested in, in uh, uh, finding out what's happening here, that's a, that's a great place to go. Um, and Kim Lang from the Senior Center, um, I mentioned last time that uh, she wanted people to know about this free conference, which will enhance learning and understanding of um, dementia caregiving with the focus on the Lewy body dementia, which, uh, as I mentioned before, is the condition that uh, Robin Williams, the, the famous comedian, was coping with um, when, he, when he died so tragically. Um, and this is at, the, uh, at uh, Kestrel Ridge on Thursday, November 10th. <laughs> So I believe that's next week. That's a week from Thursday, from eight to four, and it's free and open to anybody who is interested. And um, the holiday train is coming Friday, December 9th. This is a pretty exciting event for Columbus. Um, this time it will not be virtual, so it's going to be even more fun for for those of you who want to get there and enjoy it. I think uh, something like 5,000 people came to the last one, so it's a big deal. And uh, a lot of different uh, Columbus groups get involved in helping out. Um, and uh, so it's pretty exciting. It's quite an event. So put that on your calendar. Um, and let's see. I think that was it for me for tonight for announcements. Um, yeah. And uh, so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Alder Steiner will make a motion to adjourn. Alder motive will second. It's moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So we are adjourned, and we're going to now move right into the Committee of the Whole, since we were so efficient with this meeting. And um, I will be running the show for this. So I think I can remember we don't vote. <laughs> uh, we just suggest that things get moved on. So. Um, I am going to ask Pat to take the roll call. Albright, present. Arnold? Present. Gray is excused. Motive? Present. Reed? Here. Rolke? Present. Steiner? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. The meeting has been noticed in accordance with state statutes and local ordinances, and so now I'm looking for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Alder Roki will move to approve tonight's agenda. Alder Moda will second. Um, and I don't believe, oh, I'm sorry. It has been moved and seconded. We do vote on this, uh, that we approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? OK. Um, we don't have anybody signed up who wants to speak at this meeting, I'm assuming. Um, yes, Paula. OK. Pretty on, yes. Uh, Paula Steiner, 442 West James Street. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, the first thing was this last week, uh, the city celebrated Freak Week. And as a resident with small-ish children, I mean, they are getting a little bit bigger. Um, it has been really appreciative of all the work that the city does to to make that week very exciting and it gives you multitudes of different opportunities as a family and as citizens and the trick-or-treating was phenomenal as well it's always fun it's one of those communities that we've lived in multiple communities but this one really just goes above and beyond when it comes to the halloween experience so i just wanted to kind of give a kudos to the recreation director amy joe um, and then the other thing was I had applied for the beautification position, and mm -hmm. I have yet to hear anything, so I was just looking, hoping to hear an update tonight. 
Well, uh, I am so glad you brought up Halloween. You may have noticed I was sort of looking at my notes. I knew there was something I forgot to mention in my report, and that was it. Um, I was so impressed, you know, with all the different activities that, as you said, Columbus does. Especially the bonfire. I mean, that's always just a really great community gathering. There was, I, we've been grow, going since she started it, and every year it just you see more and more people there, and it's just it's a really neat, inexpensive way for community members to get yeah. together. And the house de decorating contest was so much fun, too. Yeah. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. And actually, uh, I'm uh, glad that you mentioned the beautification committee because <laughs> in my haste tonight, that was another thing I was going to mention in the mayor's report, but um, I think I'll do it right now. We uh, are looking for more people to apply. We have not had, and yours is the only application so far, so I am asking... Um, people who maybe are business owners in town because we're looking for two of them for um, people and who are just citizens and I think you applied to be a, just a, a citizen reg interested regular in Regular Joe, yep. Right, um, and then somebody in, from I, a civic I group. My question would be is how are you guys asking for that? Is that just through the website and through these meetings or is there any type of paid advertising going into any of the committees that need assistance? Actually at need? Tourism last night, the Tourism Committee met last night and um, J.D. Milberg is going to send me a contact list of people that were involved, I think, with the original committee mm -hmm. several years ago, um, business owners, and I am going to be emailing them and reaching out to them to see if any of them would be interested. And uh, I'm working on getting the word out to the to the local civic groups too to see who from those groups might be interested in, in joining us. I, I did have an interaction with someone who is a part of the St. Jerome community, um, but have her information to tell her how to apply so I guess that's why I was asking how is that getting out to the community about and this you applied by just going to the website mm -hmm. and then just going to the mayor's page so if you know. how are people other than me who have been bothering you guys about this <laughs> <laughs> uh, well if anyone is interested in applying go to the mayor's page on the city website and then there's a link that you can click on for the different um, different commissions boards and committees and um, then you fill out an application as you did, uh, and it's pretty basic, um, and it gets emailed to me. So we are working on it, and um, awesome. I appreciate you bringing that um, to the attention to Thank everybody you. here too tonight. Time. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So uh, now we're going on to the committee and commission minutes. And if uh, anyone has any questions or, or anything they'd like to bring up about the minutes, now's the time to do it. <coughs> Otherwise, we will just send them on to the regular council meeting. No questions, no, questions, no concerns? Okay. So everyone is comfortable with them going to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the next items uh, on the agenda are uh, have to do with the um, Utility Commission. Um, number six is the recommended wholesale sewer rates from the Utility Commission. And I know that <laughs> Michelle is here tonight. If anybody had any questions or if there was anything that you might want to add to what was in the agenda, um, and uh, she's also here to talk about, you know, number seven, which is uh, the ordinance. Um, well, and we also have Katie here, so didn't want to leave you out, Katie. And then uh, the eighth item on the uh, agenda tonight is to, to ratify the utility budgets. So we'll start with number six, the recommended wholesale sewer rates from the utility commission. Does anyone... Do they have any, any, any of you have any questions about the uh, information you got in your packet? I don't. Pretty straightforward? That's, that was my sense too. Um, okay, how about number seven? The number seven is the ordinance containing updated retail sewer rates from the Utility Commission. And again, fairly straightforward, but Michelle is here. Um, Katie's here too. If you want to ask her anything? 
Um, otherwise, if, if nobody has any questions or issues, we can send those on. Yep. Everyone's comfortable with that? Yeah. And then the final utility budget is number eight. Um, and, you know, this is a little more complicated, but um, also I think fairly straightforward. Does uh, anybody, having looked it over, have any questions? Well, you guys are making my job very easy tonight, <laughs> I must say. Um, okay. So number nine on uh, the agenda tonight is to review the contract and the lease options for the Senior Center copier and printer. And Kim's here, if anybody wants to know what this is all about. Um, yeah, why don't you have a, Hello. give us a few <laughs> words. <laughs> Hello. Um, fairly straightforward, our contract with our current um, Fender for our printer copy machine is up. Um, we got quotes from three different, our current vendor and two other vendors, um, and that information is there. They're all fairly similar in pricing. Um, of course, there are differences enough that you can see who's the least expensive to the most expensive. We also have the option of purchasing our current machine, which over the five years that we'd have um, the contract for any of the other vendors would be the least expensive. Um, we'd keep our current machine, which is five years old, um, for another five years. There, it would depreciate, so probably there wouldn't be a ton of value at the end of that five years, but it would be the least expensive option overall for the five years, if you can see that on there. Um, so I don't know how the city feels generally about purchasing equipment like that as opposed to leasing it because it does depreciate fairly fast. Um, but realistically, that is the least expensive. Um, Rhyme is my preferred vendor just because I have had very good experiences with them overall and they're close at hand and able to um, accommodate us if we need something in a hurry. Um, they all are offering similar type machines, so there's nothing. We don't need anything particularly fancy at the Senior Center. It just needs to do all of the basic things. We do do a lot of photocopying for folks and um, scanning for folks. And um, we also publish our own newsletter and our dementia-friendly newsletter. So there's newsletters besides um, that we, we take care of. So we need something decent, but um, our current machine is fine. So anything comparable to that would work out for us as well. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I Go did ahead. have a couple quick questions. Sure. Sorry. Um, how much do you use the copier? I'm always a proponent of making sure that it's going to last the time frame that you think it's going to last. Yeah. And, so and if you if you see on there the the copy numbers that are on there, mm -hmm. those are pretty. Those are based on our use in the last five years with the lease that we have. Okay. So that's about what we use it per year. And then um, my other questions were, I noticed that Rhyme only had 500 down for black and white copies. And we do do more color than black and white. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, that was a big difference yeah. in, in, in the contract versus the others. Um, yeah. And with any of the contracts, if we go over those allotted amounts, we pay that per price. Right. Um, that's listed there. And generally... Um, we don't really go over those num numbers that we do occasionally, but it's never amounted to a significant increase in our monthly cost. Because um, it says black and white current allotment is 750 and the black and white for Rhyme, which you're recommending, is 500 That's a big difference. It is a big difference, and, it, and when we had our contract with um, Impact, those were the numbers that they had used in the past, but they actually need to be decreased. Okay. And they said it wouldn't change the numbers whether we went up or down. So when we make the final contract, we can ask them to up that, but it wouldn't change the pricing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple questions too, but I think sure. Trina oh. does too. Oh, <laughs> Trina, oh. Tr let Trina go since she's on. Hi, Trina. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, you know, I just, the, I was, um, leaning toward making the purchase, started, not, started purchasing a new one. Um, I was looking at the current one is five years old, 
It looks like that's the typical copier lifespan. Mm -hmm. And it also looks like um, the copy companies are only obligated to uh, cover cabin machine parts for seven years. So um, if we spent it only living two more years anyway, it's just uh, maybe like $300 more to um, go, go grind over a two-year period. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, if you look at the, the breakdown that I gave you, it says what the total cost of our out-of-pocket would be for the total of the contract, which is five years. Um, so that's what that, that figure is in that column. It, it's everything we pay for that entire contract. Um, whereas if we purchase it, at the end of five years, honestly, it won't be worth anything. The copies just go out of, out of date. Even if they're still usable, the, the software and stuff gets bad. That's what had happened previously, and we, we leased this one. Hmm. So it is more expensive to lease, but you are always assured that it's going to be taken care of. If there's a problem, they come and fix it. If there's um, challenges for some reason or technology changes, they're going to come and make sure that it's updated. So that is a benefit to having a leased um, piece of equipment as opposed to owning it. You always know that you're going to have, have it taken care of and it will continue to be useful without extra funding. Anyone? Adam, you have a question? I, I had a question. Um, sure. The leased programs, they, they include the toner for it, right? With yes. The maintenance. Does the buyout maintenance include toner? Is it that does not. factored we'd in the have price? To, we'd have to purchase that separately. So it'd be, it's not factored into the price that you have at the total then for yeah. any expenses? Okay. No. That's because kind of, toner is expensive. It is. <laughs> so, it is. It and is, if you yeah. make a lot of copies, like yeah. you're going to be burning through yeah, a lot I of mean, toner. Right now with the, the piece of equipment we have, we probably go through... There's four different toners because it's color. Right. Um, and we probably change, we probably change out all four of them once a year. I mean, they do last quite a long okay. time. Oh, so you, okay. Yeah, a lot more than you would think. <laughs> but yeah, I know. But yeah, it, if we go through four toners a year, that would be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think $2,500 seems like a little, extent, a little kind of a large dollar amount for a buyout on a printer. Well, right, it's only five years old, but then again, I mean, if I know, we but bought, the, yeah. as Trina said, the useful yeah. life is only 12. Right. And so what does a brand new printer cost when you're buying it brand yeah. new? And I didn't, yeah, and I didn't get any quotes for new equipment because that's just not going to be. In, right. So for me personally, I think I'm more interested in doing a lease because mm -hmm. then you have the then you have the guarantee you right. have the service center you yeah. because you usually get if you do the lease you get a discount on the toner and you have yeah. you get all the little parts along with the the lead that goes along with it correct I and agree. then you're assured that it's always going to work mhm mm mhm mm yeah yeah that's that's one of the big things about a lease is you always know that it's going to be fixed pretty quickly and and everything is above board you don't know what might come up when you you have a used machine you don't know what might come up at any point so that is an advantage to having a lease. Having worked in a previous life as the service manager and dispatcher for a company that did sales and service of these kind of multifunction machines, I can tell you the number of ser service calls that go in after five years exponentially oh, yeah. higher. So oh, yeah. I also would be yeah. much more in favor of the lease. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would back that as well. So are we comfortable moving that ahead to the next meeting? Okay. Yeah, as long as, yeah, as, long as we're going to talk about Is, and that's mm -hmm. that would be my preference. Okay. okay. Between if I have now, a, if I have a vote <laughs> between now and the next meeting, can you find out if you can increase that black and white oh, sure. amount so you're not paying those overages? Yep. Thank you. Trina, did you have something? Oh no, I was just making sure that so we were deciding to move Ryan forward for this thing. Yep. Yep. Yes. The, yep. And I'll get that that's information right. right away. Okay. Thank you. And. You know, you might as well stay there because the next item on the agenda is to um, re review the request to change the name of the current Columbus Area Senior Center. Building. Building. The building. The building. Okay. So what do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> um, this is a conversation that um, we've been having for quite some time, not just with our current advisory board, but with past advisory boards. And the building itself is utilized um, 
in such a broad sense now, um, you know, when it was first created as a senior center, that's all that it was used for. And then eventually, I don't know if it started out as a place for the elections, but eventually it became a place for elections. But now it's used by everybody for everything. And we really do have uh, a lot of activities going on that aren't specific to the senior center. Um, so our thought was that it would be a better idea to rebrand that building as something more um, inclusive of what it really is. It's a, it's a community center, it's a senior center, um, it's a meeting place, it's a place where um, different departments utilize it for meetings and activities, um, different boards and commissions use it, um, charitable organizations use it, we rent it out. Um, so we'd like it to reflect what it really truly is. Um, also, there is a stigma with um, seniors being called seniors. Not everybody feels that way. I don't, I'm a senior, I have no problem with that. But there are those who really hesitate to participate in some of our programming, even though it's designed for anyone over 50 and their activities just during the day for that group of people that we specifically work with. So we wanna make sure that they feel that it's all inclusive because it is all inclusive. It's not just for um, folks who are over 50. It's for families and multi-generational activities um, for young, old, and in between. Um, and so we felt that that was another um, important key in our getting folks um, to not feel that there's a reason why they can't use this beautiful center instead of you know, utilizing it. Um, and that was a suggestion from our, our advisory board too when we talk about um, welcoming the public in, what things were keeping them from coming in. Although we are doing, we, we're doing an incredible amount of rentals right now and we're, we're utilized a lot of evenings during the week. So that's not necessarily a deterrent, but we just felt like it should reflect better what the purpose of that building has become. Anybody have any questions no. for Kim? Oh, I just have a c comment. I guess I guess I technically do have a why didn't why didn't you choose Columbus Community Center? Because the community center is right next door. <laughs> I know, but but Amy Jo is rec, so couldn't we make that a community that the Columbus Recreation and then make that the senior center community center? We felt it would be well, we could. I mean we didn't I didn't discuss it with anybody else about that building because I'm concerned right, about my right, building. Right. Yeah. I mean, because um, that would make sense yeah. if, if Amy Joe's over in the old Anchor Bank and that's a rec department versus community center. Yeah. But that, that's my only thought. Yeah. We didn't actually, we didn't not discuss the fact that it would be nice to be community center, but we also knew that there was already a building identified that way. So we tried to come up with options that were very simple and straightforward that didn't require a lot of rethinking in people's minds but did update the name a little bit and so that's what the discussion centered around anybody else have any oh. oh oh okay <laughs> trina did, did oh no I, I had the same comment um but i just you know don't like the name columbus center but i hate that community is already used I'm just wondering how much trouble it would be to move things around also. I have no idea. <laughs> that lovely article attached said Social Center for Oxford. It was that name considered? Um, we, we really didn't go through a lot of options. We just wanted to make it as easy as possible. Um, so basically you could pull off those portions of the building and not have to um, but we, I mean, it, it wasn't that we had any particular opinion that one was good or bad. It was just we wanted to make it the, as easy and straightforward as we could. And it looks like the only cost that you believe would be associated with the change would be, um, you know, updating the, na the name and media, communications, the front entrance. Um, and are you um, recommending the Columbus, uh, let's see, do, 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 Columbus Center as the name? Either the Columbus Center or the Columbus Area Center. Just oh, okay. again, for ease, it, it is close to the community center. Okay. So, um, Hi. Mine? no, great. Oh, I was just going to kind of interject. I mean, because I, so the Columbus Area Center, I think, sounds too close to Columbus Area 
aquatic center. Oh. I'm okay with changing the community center to the recreation center because I'm not really holding large activities there. I'm just doing rentals. So, I mean, you could be. Yeah, I, I suppose. I don't oh. have it. <laughs> <laughs> the recreation center is a good name for my building, right? And right. the community center could yeah. be a good option for the senior center. Mm -hmm. I think it blends well. That's my boat, anyway. Yeah, I, yeah I, I liked where you were going. Yeah, yeah. So. I agree. I do. Just I just worry that it's going to cause confusion when you say, well, we're going to the community center, they're going to come to your building and not okay. hers. I mean, it's a learning curve to it, but well, it's and, still. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, right now people come to us and are looking for Amy Jo. They, because they not everybody knows what that little building is. Right. I mean, it's even though it's been named that for a while, there hasn't actively been somebody in there for a while. So people come to the senior center. So, I mean... We're close. We'll just tell each other. Go next door. Go next door. Yeah. I'd like to recommend that staff goes back and discuss this and then sure. comes back with another recommendation that everybody is comfortable with. Yeah, I feel sure. like it needs to be vetted more. Yep, that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. Amy, did you have something? I was just going to recommend that if there were confusion, temporary signage is really easy to print in lots of colors on those multifunctional machines. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so is everyone comfortable with Sarah's suggestion sure. Sure. okay all, all right. right we'll talk about it thank you okay and thank you um, moving along to number 11 to review the cemetery mowing proposal and is Jerry here Jerry's here yeah uh, you want to talk about this Jerry sure. good evening how are you tonight? Um, yeah, so the Department of Public Works recently completed its process of putting out all of our biannual two-year contracts to um, all local contractors. We put it out for advertisement. And as we've been seeing over the course of the last couple of years, especially this past year, our costs have exponentially been rising. Uh, the, the, the drastic increases in some of these contracts are, are having us take another look at their cost. Um, the mowing contract, uh, what we are currently uh, budgeted for and what was increased to this year's budget, the current proposal came back, again, very, very much uh, higher than what we had anticipated. And with that uh, exponential increase, we, we took the time to reevaluate that process. Um, we took a look at current um, wages of our seasonal staff. We took a, a look at our current cost of equipment. And we deduced that if we are successful, it, it's really predicated on hiring seasonal employees. But if we hire four seasonal employees and uh, acquire the equipment to, to do the work up there over the next couple of years, that there's a potential to save the city quite a bit of money there. Um, over the first year, we could save the city $7,000 over a contract that really at this time is right around 50000 the second year, 7000 and looking into the third year, we'd be looking at almost $21,000 worth of savings, which is a cons considerable amount when you look at the overall cost of the, the contract itself. So th the contract came in. Um, looking at the contract, you can see some of that information is there. The first year of the two-year contract would have increased uh, from, give or take, 50000 all the way up to about fifty nine. And then in the second year of the contract, it would have increased to 62. Now, we did only receive one contract bid back for that, um, so I took the time to make a bunch of phone calls. And costs are just going up across the board. I had several vendors from the area come in and take a look at it. Some of them gave me ideas of numbers they wouldn't put in a bid, but they weren't too far off. Uh, this contract bid that we received back was considerably higher than what it was, but it was pretty close to what a lot of vendors were going up to. Diesel, in, in, you know, cost increases, labor in, increases, so everybody's costs are going up. With looking at that, um, our proposal is pretty straightforward. Um, we propose that over the course of the next two years that we bring this service back in-house. And in, 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 on that note, we wanted to mention that this is not the only contract or the only type of work that we're looking at bringing back in-house because the contractor costs are going up so much, we had to take a look at quite a bit of that work. This was just one of them. 
and this was one that we feel that if we're successful in hiring seasonal employees and obtaining that equipment, we have two years here to evaluate it. We're not, we're not going to lose money. You know, we'll, as long as we can hire seasonal and, and get the work done, we're not going to lose money. But it'll give us a couple years to evaluate and see if this is a process we want to move forward. Um, I think right within this proposal, um, I mentioned that it's pretty much predicated off of being able to hire seasonal employees. Um, if we're not successful there, because it's it's a very difficult process. I know there's a couple departments in the city that depend upon seasonal employees, and it's it's a challenge to make sure we get them fully staffed. So, but um, the proposal is hire four seasonals, obtain the equipment, reallocate the money that's dedicated right now for contract mowing at the cemetery, and allow DPW to reallocate it for seasonal labor, wages, and equipment. Anybody have any questions for Jerry? I Go do. Ahead. Sean? So did you look into leasing instead of purchasing? Leasing what? Leasing the equipment. Like, I see that you have a current large mower. Equipment ac acquisition costs. So are you talking about buying the lawnmower, or are you talking about yeah. leasing it for two years and try and no, do it? No, we we're talking about buying it. So that's a very good question. And I'll let you know right now, we are taking a look at a lot of equipment in-house. And I'm a big proponent of leasing equipment. However, leasing equipment makes more sense when you go to the larger ticket items. Okay. So, uh, for example, and I'm just going to go to the extreme here so you can understand, leasing a string trimmer doesn't make any sense because the longevity of the string trimmer isn't that long. Mowers are the same. They only have, their, long, their, their lifespan is only probably three to five years, depending on how many hours you put on them. So to go and get a lease on a mower is very difficult. There aren't too many uh, vendors out there doing that. However, it's a good question because leasing equipment is something we're looking at. But again, it's usually on the trucks and the, mm -hmm. the backhoes. That's something that we're taking a good hard look at. Okay, so if we were going to buy a purchase a lawnmower, it would be the 14000 then that's on the back Correct. here? Okay. Correct. And again, that cost is calculated into that whole project and, okay. the, and the savings. Thanks. It can be used for other things, though, as well? Absolutely. Okay. I, I had a question about um, putting in the bids that you had like all these here. I'm just looking at taking all the like You put an ad out into the Daily Citizen. Is there anywhere else that you put an ad out for more of them? Because it's not to say anything bad about the Daily Citizen, but its numbers have gone down in the past 10 years. Absolutely. And are you reaching out to other areas like, you know, we're pretty close to Sun Prairie. We're pretty close to Rio, Portage. There's a lot of companies out there probably starting up might be better bids out there. With each one of these, we got one, maybe two off of them. So I'd like to see more bids come back so we have something to compare it to. I know it's hard because a lot of companies are, you know, fine with the amount of business they have. But if we're not getting enough exposure out there, companies aren't going to know to look for a contract if they don't know it's there. I completely agree. So customarily, that's been the advertisement for years. But again, times change. The, the readership is, you know, the viewership of that particular right. newspaper has gone down. And it's one of the reasons I reached out to a couple of vendors in Sun Prairie. I reached out all the way into Madison into one of the Midwest largest companies, the Bruce Company. They go every place. Um, guy met me on site, and I got an email back from the lady manager they won't even come into this area. Same with the Sun Prairie. It's at the cost that they're incurring right now for people from Sun Prairie and Madison to come all the way here, what they would have to bid would actually be higher than the current bid that we got. Staying local, but again, going outside and advertising the Sun Prairie and Madison is something that we should look at, which is why I called around to some of the vendors in both Beaver Dam, Sun Prairie, and Madison. I would, just, I would recommend looking on social media because that is the way most businesses are running their advertisements and looking for work is through either Facebook, Twitter, or whatever media platform they have. And I know they have they sell they have ads there mm -hmm. that you can focus pretty specifically on things to get more viewers, and they're not terribly expensive. So it's it's pretty easy you can find people that do that Agreed. even in house to, to expose more to get more bids because one bid you're kind of stuck with whatever you get. <laughs> I completely agree. After this year, our asphalt, our concrete, we're reevaluating that entire process. We have to find better ways of not only making the money go farther, but also just uh, increasing the, the, the amount of bids that we get back overall. So. Okay. I was just going to say, Jerry, I, I'd like to move this forward and have you do it. I like the fact that you've been thinking outside the box. I've noticed not just on this 
particular project, but there's been some others in trying to find savings. Um, I don't disagree with some of the stuff that Adam said, but I think that's an internal discussion that needs to happen as a policy with the city um, where they're going to be doing advertising, and that's not on the agenda tonight. So I, I think that that's something Kyle could schedule or take care of at another time. But I'd like to recommend that we move this forward um, for Jerry to have DPW do the mowing. Um, can I ask one more question? So this is actually for you, Kyle. So, I mean, are you part of the hiring process too, or no? I'm just wondering. So, what hiring is the like? Yeah, how? What is the likelihood of getting four seasonal employees? Well, I think it depends. Um, we're looking at compensation, so that has a direct bearing on it. It depends on the market. If the economy slows down, it's been um, a struggle at times. But also, I think this. You know, we've had partners in the community that. Is if it's been a difficult thing to get job announcements out into the places where you find uh, people like teenagers. Um, so, you know, I think it's uh, it's going to take more work, but I don't think it's undoable. There's other places in the city that get dozens of uh, teenagers to come work. So, I, I think it's a matter of looking in the right place and having the right money. If I can interject, that's another thing I think citywide departments are looking at. Times are just a little bit more difficult to obtain contractors. Work in general, not just seasonals, but labor in general. It just seems like um, I read a report recently that there's like a couple million people that have just disappeared from the workforce. Every, every industry is struggling right now, so we have to become creative in how we search. We changed the process how we did it this year, and we reached into the high school. And we brought in seasonals from the high school. And we had our doubts on how they would work out young, what they could drive, what they could do. And we got quite a few applicants. So those are the things we have to start looking at. Okay. Reaching out to some of the job fairs, reaching out to the high schools. Um, I know Amy Jo uh, hires quite a few seasonals for her pool. And I know they go through the same process of trying to make sure they've got enough people that come in and they can staff it. There's just different ways that you got to get creative to try to do that. I think we can be successful. but. Doing this is really predicated because I, I have to, you know, stress and emphasize that current staff and current equipment levels we can't do it. The, the staff is already stretched at this time of the year. Like with leaves, they that's pretty much all they do. They couldn't be mowing lawn, so we it would be predicated on hiring some extra seasonals and some extra equipment. Yeah, I would be willing. I would like to see it move forward. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think doing it in houses can be cheaper, but. It's always been an advantage because then you don't have to worry about it. I was just going to say, as a mother of five, I know that any one of my kids would have jumped at a job like this in high school. I think that that's a good pool to reach out to. Yep. Trina. Trina. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm in agreement with Motive. I really appreciate Jerry going um, just above and beyond with creative solutions uh, for the problem of finding an affordable mower. It's been an uh, issue for years with hardly getting any response. I mean, I even know for myself this summer, I was getting quotes of, you know, 200 plus for mowing my lawn. Um, so, I mean, you know, on a bigger scale, it's, it's quite a challenge. So, um, I'm thankful for Jerry to come with this for the house. And I, I think, Jerry, now that, um, you know, we're really working hard with the school district to have a, a closer uh, collaborative um, relationship, um, maybe it'll be easier to, to find some kids who might want to help out in the summer. I think so. I think yeah. that's going to be a good resource. And that was actually Stephanie's idea, mm -hmm. Human Resources. And she reached out to the schools, and that was very successful for good. us this year in obtaining the seasonal staff that we had. Okay, great. So everybody comfortable with then moving this to the next meeting? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, thank you, Jerry. And now we're going on to number 12, which is to review the city service bids, services bids. Um, and uh, actually, I guess we are rejecting then the cemetery mowing bid that you received. That's what we're requesting, correct. And the on-call weed notice mowing, you're recommending that well, we? That one there we are recommending uh, rejecting, but in there it's kind of two-part. Um, we feel we, we did that this year 
we went out and we were able to in-house do a lot more brush mowing and storm ditch and retention pond mowing, but we had to go out and lease and or rent the equipment, which put me over on a couple of those budget accounts. Um, we do have staff in-house that's very fluent with this type of operation. Um, we can handle this in-house, and it's not something that has a lot of volume. Uh, if I put out, as, as weed commissioner, if I put out orders to mow down lots or there's areas that we have to do, it, the volume isn't that high. We can handle it in-house. However, we currently don't have the equipment to do lot mowing with brush on it. We don't have the equipment. Um, I, again, uh, ask to just take those funds that we allocate for uh, uh, paying the contract and more, both for city, sir, uh, city lots, uh, city-owned property, and private-owned property, and rededicate that to getting a brush mower. Um, I may, it, it probably will be a little bit more than that. It, it's definitely going to be under the $15,000 allocation. I, I can give you right now. I'm looking at between eight and nine. However, that's permanent. Then in-house, we could start doing those orders where we have to, for example, we had to go out to the Commerce Center and order a uh, property owner to mow down his lot. That's something that we could do in-house. He ended up doing it himself, but we did have to reach out two times this year to have Happy Moore, who was our current contractor, who did not return a bid this year. Um, and I had spoken to people there. It was just too far for them to come. It wasn't profitable for them. But that's two times. We can handle that kind of volume in-house and, again, saving the city money overall. That's great. Okay. Okay, so just can so 12 we're rejecting, right? The A and B, that's done. And this, what you're talking about, is 13? Well, um, I think he's still talking. We're, we're still 12. talking about 12. So then, what is so then B on how weed notice mowing? Correct. That's your. That's the one that we're currently on. That's just a it's just a brush mower. We're not asking for more funds. We we're just reallocating and then using what we have in house. I, I I won't even approach Kyle for extra money. We'll we'll reallocate funds to take care of that in house. And that can be used for retention ponds. That can not only be used for exactly not only for doing those orders, but it'll actually be multifunctional, and we could start taking care of some of our own retention ponds, uh, storm ditches that we currently contract with the county with, and pay them a substantial amount of money. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. So then. Moving on to number 13, so we'll, we will move these ahead to the next uh, council meeting. Moving on to number 13, we're looking at uh, reviewing the city services bids and uh, looking to um, <clears throat> the tree service contract, electrical maintenance, the hillside cemetery internment contract, HVAC maintenance contract, the plumbing maintenance contract, and these are all bids that we, uh, it's rec being recommended that we approve. Is that correct, Kyle? Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jerry, is that correct? Okay. Um, so should we go through these one by one? First one is the tree service contract. Anybody have any, anything you want to no, These are really up? straightforward. Uh, current contractor, um, are, are um, absolutely no issue with them right now. Okay. Their cost is very competitive, and I have called around on all these next contracts to make sure that the prices they submitted were pretty much in the ballpark. Okay. So current contractor, and we're very pleased with them. Okay. And that's KMB. KMB yeah, Tree Service. Yeah. Them there. Yeah. yeah. We have to. Anybody have any questions on that? No. Okay. And then um, the next is the electrical maintenance contract. And same thing, current same thing. contractor, very happy with them. Um, we do reach out periodically to different contractors when they can't handle the type of electrical service. I know Katie has specialized services, and sometimes they get a little backed up, but uh, we use them all across the city, and I haven't heard too many complaints about them. I haven't heard any complaints about them. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? How about the Hillside Cemetery internment contract? This one here again, current contractor, very pleased with his services, uh, very timely. I will point out that he's had some rate increases. Um, I did take the time to call around to other uh, monument companies and other cemeteries, uh, uh, both some other people that I used to work with and then people up here, 
and again, rates are going up all across the board. Um, he's not out of the norm. There are a couple costs or uh, rates on here that we'll have to adjust on our fee schedule that Brandon's already aware of. Uh, the cemetery board has already approved those tentatively okay. upon you approving the contract. Okay. Any questions on uh, the Hillside Cemetery internment contract? No. Okay. Um, and then the next one is the HVAC maintenance contract. And you again Same are. Thing, current contractor. Um, uh, very happy with their, their services. Um, HVAC, I, I know, I believe when I arrived here, the city was using a contractor that they went with uh, that was cheaper. And sometimes that's not always the best way to go. You have to make sure that they're not only capable of doing the work or, you know, their references pan out. The contractor that they had hired just wasn't able to do the volume of work that we were giving them. So we had to, we parted mutually. We went back to this company and from prior uh, notes and information that I have and, and to my current experience that I've worked with them, again, no complaints. So I recommend moving forward with them. Okay, great. Um, anybody have any questions about this? No. I, okay. I mean, we're talking about going with Taz. Correct. Yeah, I would agree with that. I know they did the work at the police station, and I, I think they did a good job, and I know I've had them do my work. Yep, me too. Yeah. They're great guys. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now the last one on this list um, under number 13 is the plumbing maintenance contract. So this is um, a new vendor for us. And um, the current vendor that we have did not put in a, uh, a, a proposal. So again, I had to make some calls, make sure everything's competitive. And again, like everything else, costs are going up exponentially. Their rates are not out of the norm. However, again, to point out, this is a new vendor. They did bid on two of our contracts, so they, 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 they must be a larger company. Um, I researched them a little bit. I didn't see anything negatively posted about them. Their rates are together. Um, they did not win the other contract due to cost, but on this one, they were the uh, the best bidder. And I, if I correct, might have been the only bidder again. But their rates are, again, right where everyone else is. Don't have any experience with them, but because they were the best bid and they are of substantial size and they should be able to handle the volume of work that we put forth, um, I, again, because of the cost, I think we should recommend, I recommend moving forward with them as the uh, lowest bid. Anybody have any questions? Okay. All right, so we will, if you're all in agreement, we will move that forward too. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Lots of good information there. Now we're going down to moving down to number 14 on the agenda, which is ordinance updates. And um, Kyle, you worked on this one, so I think I'll let you. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, eight ordinances listed here. Uh, they're kind of pairs, actually. They kind of worked out that way. So um, I'll, ta I'll talk through them in that manner, uh, starting from the top, uh, 2 87 and 18-315 uh, are sort of paired together and those both deal with updating the name of the utility commission from columbus water and light to the columbus utility commission uh, the next line is uh, 2 220 sub b sub 8 and that one goes with the very bottom which is 70-31 and both of those update that the uh, recreation director uh, would report to the city administrator or its designee uh, previously, it was just the city administrator, and with the addition of the assistant administrator, currently uh, the uh, recreation director is reporting to the assistant administrator. Uh, we kept it with the city administrator being in the, there with a designee uh, because the recreation director could also have been the assistant administrator, and the assistant administrator doesn't exist in ordinance currently, so uh, that, that could change over time uh, with different skill sets. Um, the next one is 2-371 uh, and 2-372. Um, hopefully no one's going to miss it, but this language would eliminate the Greater Columbus Energy Task Force Commission. Um, there's no minutes or record of it meeting that I could find on our website. Um, and so this would effectively eliminate this uh, defunct commission. And uh, the next uh, two items are 261B and 261C. Uh, this would update the makeup of the cable commission from six members to five. 
It eliminates the Utility Commission's representative on the Cable Commission. Uh, so that, uh, again, gets you to an odd number, which is uh, more traditional for uh, voting and things like that. It also reduces the quorum needed from four members down to three. And that is a, a commission that has struggled at times to get quorum. Um, and then in a related note, it eliminates the language concerning the Utility Commission's appointment to the Cable Commission because that's eliminated. So uh, these are kind of cleanup ordinances, um, and I guess if there's any questions. I had a, I had a question. Uh, the term designate is kind of vague. Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to create an ordinance for the assistant administrator position and then eventually change that over, or is this going to remain as just a designee is whoever is labeled as that. I would say designee would be the, the typical traditional way, and you'll see designee in a, a lot of situations. Uh, for example, if the recreation director was the assistant administrator, they would then be supervising themselves if we had the assistant administrator in, stat or in ordinance as the supervisor, um, or it would actually make it an incompatible position, I guess, by, by statute. Um, so this allows the flexibility uh, to designate the assistant administrator as the supervisor, but also as the assistant administrator might change over time, uh, we may change which departments report under which um, uh, the assistant or the uh, administrator. So this doesn't lock us in every time we make an org chart change to have to change an ordinance. So uh, is everybody comfortable moving the yeah. ordinance changes? I'm, to I, I'm sorry, I'm just. Um, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to wrap my head around this. Uh, it just, it, to me, it seems vague, but I just, if are we creating an ordinance for an administrator, assistant administrator, where it could be any one other department head, or is it like a separate position altogether? I'm not saying that you know our rec department or DPW department is going to be the assistant administrator down the line, but is that an option open where they're going to have a dual purpose of this and that, or is it going to be a separate position altogether where it really wouldn't co collide with, you know, if the rec department was the assistant administrator? I don't see how that would be, it would be two different positions, is my point, unless we're eliminating the park department and making the assistant administrator the head of the park department. So you're saying that... Um the one part of their job would supervise the other part of their job because no, they would it, hold two jobs just like the current setup where the planning director is also the assistant administrator but there are two positions that one person right, currently holds. Right, but we're creating an ordinance to, to create those two positions as working together, right? No, no. because the, the I mean, we, we haven't because the position was well, open to I mean, are we going anybody. to? Is that, is that my point? It's like, are we going to have it where there's an ordinance for the assistant administrator position because there isn't one? Are we going to have it where that is specifically designed, okay, this is going to be their responsibilities and duties is also doing this. If we have this as a designee, are we going to change it when it, we actually do get an ordinance for the assistant administrator where the park department or DPW, whoever, isn't necessarily going to be also the assistant administrator because then you're just taking a department head and making it all of a sudden another job on top of it and they wouldn't really be monitoring themselves. That's silly. So I, I'm just saying if there are different departments altogether, who is really in charge of what? If if it's just going to be you, or is it going to be whoever you deem it to be? Well, uh, part of the org chart process is that the city council approves the org chart, which delineates the lines of authority, and that's part of um, uh, my my job that the city council has given me. The the city council could adopt an ordinance. We would have to ramp it up for the current structure, and then if if it ever changed, we would have to roll it back and then revamp it again. Um, and you would have to, I guess, roll it back, do the recruitment, and then rebuild it with who you recruited. Um, and there's not every position in the city has um, an ordinance that creates them. Uh, it's typically um, more of your top level, and this isn't even a full-time position at this point. Um, but it's up to the council if they would like to establish it in ordinance um, and, and do it that way. It's, that's an option. Uh, this language could still serve its purpose um, in that way because, again, if the public works director uh, was potentially the um, assistant administrator, it may make more sense to have a different group of people. Or if the city clerk was, it may make sense to have a different group of people that report to the assistant and a different group of people that report to the administrator. Um, 
And I think the goal is to have something that's flexible and works so that the city council can adopt an org chart that kind of lays out those lines of authority without having to change law. Yeah, I guess my take on this is that this just allows um, the flexibility so that <clears throat> it, we don't really have to go about, I, I think you were getting, kind of getting, my sense was you were getting into the weeds there. Um, uh, maybe making it the situation a little more complicated than it needs to be because well, if we leave it at as or the city administrator's designee that doesn't that sort of cover every situation it does but it makes it confusing as to who's actually in charge of what so if we're going to have an ordinance that you know the park confusing department is, to who well, if we're going to have an ordinance where the park department reports to whomever which is most codes have you know they'd report to this person to this person it's the administrator or whoever the administrator deems right. that person so it could change at any moment is my point right as opposed to having a specific person that is in charge of this department or a specific person in charge of this department yep. it's just sort of at a whim where all of a sudden today he could say okay well this you know, Jerry's in charge of park department today or Brandon's in charge of park department today or whoever so it gets really confusing as to who's really responsible for what is my point I'm not trying to get into the weeds here but <laughs> It, I understand why you're having this is to keep it open, but to me it sounds confusing. To who's 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 the park department supposed to answer to? Does she always go to Kyle, or is it always going to be someone else? And where everyone else has a specific person to go to, where it's, it's to me it seems like it could get confusing over over time. Well, it's not like a clear position of okay, this is my boss, this is who I answer to, or this is who I'm supposed to report to. It's this person, or this person, or this person, or this person. Well, well, yeah, well, ultimately, okay. at the end of the, of the day, the city administrator is in charge of all departments and all staff. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so, to me, I. I I get where you're, I, I understand the flexibility that we're trying to, to get here. I think the part that we're getting stuck on is right now, um, Brandon is the planning department and then he's also taking on the, the part-time position, but that part-time position consists of, we decided eight hours, right? Is that what, what, what it was? I don't, do you remember? The, the planning position? Uh, the, so Brandon is a planning person and he's also a second, the, the city administrator, the assistant as an administrator, administrator, right? Mm -hmm. But in theory, if he decides he's tired of being the city administ assistant administrator, that position could go to anybody else in the Correct. department. So I think that's why the f that's why the, we're trying to build in the flexibility that anybody. So again, Brandon's not doing it. Yes, I mean we could have you know whatever. Um, the cable person come in and do the assistant administrator position. Or nobody could do it. Or and nobody. we could go back to not having it. Um, I mean, it's two months old, and we may decide that it, it was an experiment that didn't work. I think that what needs to happen is we just need clarity of the chain of command. I, I think a point's getting missed here, guys. I think that the way the ordinance is written it leaves flexibility for no matter what the org chart changes are in the future so we're not always having to go back and change an ordinance and it still leaves the ultimate responsibility as the city administrator I guess that's my take too and I, I see Paul Paul do you want to weigh in here <laughs> uh, that, that was that is the intent the intent is to have the flexibility and to then use your org chart or your internal means to to nail things down as they change. Um, you can do it either way. Because I mean, you can you can take out the word designee here, and if you want to, but then it all rests with with uh, on, on the administrator's shoulders at all times. Um, and if you try to put somebody else in because you don't know what's going to happen in the next few months with your experiments and things that you're working on, you might end up having to come back and do this all over again. Yeah. Which is fine with me, but... Uh, <laughs> Billable <laughs> hours. <laughs> exactly. but, but kind of unnecessary. So okay. I, I, I think you're kind of both getting... Uh, both sides are getting to the same point here, but I, I don't see that there's a problem doing it the way that it's written. I don't have a problem with the language. 
Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I, just I, I, I think it was a good discussion. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Uh, did, did Trina, does Trina have anything to say? I don't think she chimed in. Trina, you got anything to say? Uh, no, I had been concerned about the designated wording. Anybody else? So uh, are we comfortable then moving these changes to the next meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. And now we're going to convene to close the session. And I believe that that will be the last. Yeah, we'll do a roll call and we will not be returning then to open session except to adjourn. Um, so. Um, let's see. Convene. We're going to convene to close session. So I am looking for a motion to do that. To you should probably read the reason why. Well, okay. Um, yeah. Well, I thought the person who made the motion yeah. would I can read do it, it for it. me. I can do it. Okay. <laughs> Alder Motif will make a motion to convene to close session per one nine eight five one C to consider employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, specifically employee compensation. Hold it, Rocky, we'll second. So it has been moved and seconded to, that we convene to close session uh, as described. So we will do a roll call. Arnold? Yes. Motive? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rokey? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Albright? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We are now in closed session. Thank you, everyone. Good night.